life. I started uh, in the games industry with, uh, uh, with high school friends. We started a games company and uh, ran it for about 10 years. Uh, after once the computers got so powerful that we couldn't really keep up with our, with our small team, uh, the games industry really need to, needed to have like large, uh, large budget games in order to actually be profitable. Uh, we went to internet programming and uh, met up with uh, people who later became the founding team of Skype. And, uh, be but before we Skype, we did uh, a few other projects, including the most famous of, of that was the Kazaa file sharing software. Yeah, yeah, the uh, uh, main founder of uh, uh, Kazaa, as well as uh, Skype, Nicholas Sandstrom, uh, he uh, the situation with Kaza was that uh, a technology project quickly turned into a legal project. So, so the, from uh, actually engineering uh, engineering software, it uh, suddenly we spent uh, most of our time just uh, fighting legal challenges. And uh, yes, there was uh, there were a few interesting moments like. Uh, in US apparently, in order to be sued in civil case, you have to be handed over the documents called, you have to be served. And uh, Nicholas adopted the strategy of, uh, uh, of making sure that that not, did not happen because he didn't want to uh, fight a lawsuit in US being based in Europe. And so yes, there were situations where he, he was chased around by lawyers in a park <laughs> with motorcycle. <laughs> so they told the case over. So yes. yes, the first time he went to uh, US, he, uh, just to make sure that no lawyers can approach him, he hired uh, a gang of Swedish uh, uh, bodyguards <laughs> and he made lots of fun him because of that. <laughs> because he's a modest guy actually. Yeah, really. Yeah, nice and modest guy. That's, that was my the theme of my Humanity Plus uh, yes. uh, presentation that you had. Uh, Self-replicators that uh, basically start the evolution process and the evolution leads to hum humans being created, humans start the technolo technological progress, technological progress uh, uh, creates uh, smarter than human systems, AGIs, and once, once they take over, you have the intelligence explosion, which is, and the thing is that uh, because those steps on the, on the way, only the Technological progress is actually nice to us because because this has this is driven by market, which is in turn driven by human needs and values. However, other processes there are actually not not nice at all by default because we are we have been selected by evolution. We don't feel all the nastiness, but evolution actually it's really nasty process. Like if if you uh, Eliezer has this really good uh, example where uh, people. Thought that okay, let's let's try to uh, make uh, nast uh, let's try to make uh, nice cockroaches uh, or like cockroaches that are uh, would inhibit their uh, urge to uh, uh, replicate. So so they they, they basically it was a group selection um, group selection experiment. So they had like several different groups of cockroaches and they selected uh, like uh, those groups that. Uh, Replicated the less who had the, had the least least numbers least members after a while, and then they thought that okay that uh, therefore like, they hoped that uh, cockroaches would then start inhibiting their their uh, replication rate. However, what really happened was that they uh, breed uh, cannibals. So it's like that you see how how, how evolution just finds a way that uh, we just don't even consider. Because that's uh, evolution doesn't <laughs> deliberately design anything. It's just like the designs just fall out of the of the pipeline as a result of natural selection, which is a result of limited resources. Really seems that the main difference is that uh, Ben uh, really discounts the uh, possibility of hard takeoff, or that it doesn't even uh, it doesn't. Uh, Sort of discounted, he admits that this is possible, but he uh, thinks that there are there will be a lot of like warning signs before we get there. So so and and a lot of uh, like good developments before we get there. 
and uh, uh, and in the end he doesn't uh, he's not afraid of the heartache of uh, in the first place. That's 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 what it what it seems to me. However, myself uh, I would advocate because we are dealing something that that is one shot process. If it happens, we cannot uh, cannot like say stop and, and let let, me, let us try again. I advocate just extreme caution, and uh, I'm just not happy with uh, with. Uh, Depends or really like anyone's sort of intu intuitive uh, judgment, whether whether how high is the risk of uh, heart takeoff. Yeah, and, and I think that's that's the uh, position also the Singularity Institute is advocating that this is really we're really talking about uh, event upcoming event on this planet this century that's comparable to the invention of brains. So it's like it would be silly to not be extremely careful about this thing. Well, there are, there are many answers there. Uh, one is that it's actually not very clear that there is first mover advantage in the sense that, uh, in my view, uh, the creation of uh, uh, accidental creation, of, I call it accidental creation, accidental creation of AGI, and by that I mean uh, creation of, of AGI without actually uh, a careful engineering of the consequences of what are going to happen, is uh, similar to like a just a dynamite explosion that kills everyone. So I'm not very sure what, what does a first mover advantage mean in a dynamite explosion. So you get, you're the one that gets to pull the, pull the trigger, but so you die, everyone dies. So it's like, what's the, what's the advantage there? So it's, I think it's an, like a delusion that, that there is a first mover advantage. However, uh, like if you are, if you have your AGI carefully engineered to actually uh, make sure that the consequences are predictable, that was actually another thing uh, where we had a major uh, sort of discussion with uh, with Ben. He said that yeah, well, you can't really predict what the AGI is going to do. To which my my response was, well, if you can't predict what your what your product is going to do, why do you do it? So so. Uh, uh, Yes, but then, then of course he said, yeah, yeah, you can like, generally predict that, that some, some uh, uh, like improbabilistic term. But sure, that's what I mean. That uh, like all predictions are probabilistic in nature. Uh, and uh, uh, so yes, like if you have this uh, uh, HR really figured out, and and you uh, can create it in a, in a way that uh, either neither itself nor its products that it will create will be detrimental to humanity, uh, then there will be clearly a first more advantage in the sense that uh, the, uh, one of the things that uh, this AI will ensure as an instrumental goal is, is, is to make sure that there are no uh, dangerous AIs being created because that would be incom incompatible with, with its goals. Uh, also, the third answer here I could give is that, uh, I mean, oligarchs are not programmers. So it's like they actually need scientists and uh, researchers, programmers, to, uh, that are really top quality. And uh, interestingly, uh, one of the AI developers I talked to, I've been talking to many AI developers in the last year, uh, he pointed out that it's, uh, we were discussing the same thing in the context of uh, like military, like uh, what, what would the militaries do. And his point was that uh, he doesn't think that militaries are doing anything right now in, in, in general intelligence uh, way because if they were, they would be hiring from people that he knows. And he, he doesn't think that that, uh, that military is. Of course, like, that was only his opinion. I don't know if, how much weight should I put to that. But that was an interesting opinion. But Google I mean, has, not, not Secret Lab. The Google is working on AGI. So that's, that's, that's like, I know that I know the, <laughs> knew the person there who was working. He's actually very good. He's very worried about uh, okay. what the safety aspects. Yeah. Uh, yeah, martial looks. Yeah, martial looks, actually. Yes. That's, I think he was helping Ben in the early stage. In the yeah, yeah. Well, Ben is interesting in the sense that uh, he, he has like a really large profile in this community because like he has been uh, working on AGI. I don't know, a couple of decades or something like that. So, so it's uh, like there are. He's like a nexus in this in this AGI builders community, which therefore is a highly interesting person to talk to, obviously.
I think it's uh, okay. So uh, again, many answers. If an oligarch would, would try to fund a project, a nature project, I think uh, I think it's unlikely that that uh, you would get any results there because uh, you would just get people who would report that yes, we are making progress, and then can we have more money, please? Uh, but. Uh, so it's, it's because it's a, it's a complex uh, complex uh, project, so it's actually very hard to uh, monitor that people are staying on track. Uh, but that, that's like that might happen, that might not happen. Uh, on the other thing is, I think it's uh, because really we are talking about again, we are not talking about the tool here. We're talking about replacing the brains as the most powerful thing on this planet the most powerful future-shaping thing on this planet. I cannot really think how would one would create something that uh, uh, would have that kind of explosive power and, and be kind of uh, biased. It's like uh, triggering uh, a dynamite explosion and, and trying to uh, engineer that, that thing that it would be beneficial for, for, a, for a couple of uh, people who are standing in a circle around the dynamite. It's like, doesn't really compute to me. Yeah. So, so I think in general, I think right now a much better strategy would be to uh, avoid the creation of AGIs because we don't know how to make the explosion uh, beneficial. So, and by by avoiding the, the generate avoiding the creation of AGIs, I really mean uh, making sure that there really remains uh, some narrow or some domains that the AGI is not aware of. For example, if it doesn't have a concept of humans, it might not be very useful in some uh, for, for some tasks, but uh, it might be very useful for some other tasks. Uh, so, uh, so my, basically, my, my what I'm advocating is, is that we go on continuing, we continue uh, creating narrow AIs, and uh, just make sure that uh, we're not going to mix those components together in a way that, that uh, will become explosive. And in my view, the, uh, there certainly is some validity uh, to, to that claim, and uh, it, it is a dilemma. It's a big dilemma. Uh, so, uh, uh, so my metaphor uh, is that, uh, that we have like a room, and we, when we know that there's a bomb in there, we know that the intelligence is explosive. Once, once this, once we create this thing, there will be major changes. Just like the technological progress has changed the environment catastrophically, really. Uh, from from the perspective of evolution, like the planet has gone from producing city producing uh, forests to producing cities, and, and the shape of the planet and and how it looks from the uh, from other planets, it's, it's dramatically different now. Uh, so yes, uh, we know that there's like a high explosive in the room, and we know, we see that there are some wires uh, like dangling uh, out of it, and th so there are like two groups of people, one group of people who just other guys, but we don't. We shouldn't get, get close to it. We should like uh, try to theoretically figure out like what wires go where and and, uh, and what we really should do before we even approach it. And then there's another group is that you're not going to figure it out. Come on, and they might be right. And and uh, and they say that oh, we just we just uh, have to like a little bit pull pull those wires to make sure that that we get more information what's underneath. So yeah, it is a really really big dilemma. That how how. <laughs> It's hard to tell. It might be that, that the first first group will not uh, be helpful in the long run, but uh, what they do, in my view, is much safer so, than, than, than what the other, other group is advocating. And Ben had a response, to, response there that, that uh, uh, was also interesting. He thinks that that, that uh, uh, metaphor is not correct. He says that more, more correct would be that uh, we have a lot, lot of uh, uh, like, uh, vials in the, in the room with different liquids, and uh, we know that if, if we mix them together, then it will be explosive. But we need to figure out the ways to mix them together. Uh, and so basically, he, he, his metaphor starts from a safer place. My my uh, one my metaphor starts from a high explosive uh, situation, uh, which uh, I admit that his uh, metaphor might be more correct. Uh, from practical point of view, however, since we are dealing with uh, with a risk that potentially could wipe out the 
whole humanity, whole planet, whole life here. I think it's, we should try to be kind of re try to apply the precautionary principle and, and, and make even our metaphors more dangerous than they might be in reality. It very, very well might be an arms race of delusional people yes, that think that they, they are doing good, but they're not. And they, they want to be there first because they have some, some particular story in, in their mind how things are going to pan out. Because people, that's how, how a lot of people operate. They make predictions uh, by coming up with some particular story that they would like to see and then like starting, starting to believe in that story regardless of the actual probabilities, regardless of the possibility of that story.